All right, we're very excited to be continuing the second annual Tournament of College Athletics Trivia presented by the Scott and Holman podcast. And we are really excited uh, to be finishing up our first round here with our final matchup. We've got Clayton versus Phillip. Both of these guys, you may remember, if you were listening to, uh, to this tournament last year, both these guys competed, did really well. This is actually a rematch of one of our semifinals uh, from last year. So really excited to get these guys back and to be talking to them again. And uh, I'm sure we are expecting, we keep saying that every match, we expect this to be competitive, but this is one match I think we know it's going to happen just because uh, we saw both of these guys uh, compete really well last year. So uh, randomly selected player one for today is Philip. Uh, he is a host of the 1012 podcast. He contributes to Cowboys Ride for Free and the Land Grant Gauntlet. Philip, it's uh, good to be talking to you again. Thanks, guys. Very happy to be here. Uh, very excited to hopefully not lose to Clayton again, but I don't like my chances. So we'll just see what happens. All right. And uh, Clayton uh, back again. He was, in fact, he's our I don't want to say, I mean, maybe the favorite for this because he, uh, he advanced to the finals last year. Ryan was uh, our winner. Clayton uh, lost rid a, ridiculous, a ridiculously competitive final match where between the two of them, they answered every single question correctly. Uh, Ryan decided to go out on top, so Clayton's back. Uh, you may know him from uh, Down the Drive as well as uh, the Sabre Project all over the internet. Uh, Clayton, good to be talking to you again. Thank you. It's a genuine pleasure to be here now that I've been jinxed. Uh, I, I love this tournament. I wish we did it every single week all year. It's, this is just a fantastic opportunity, and I appreciate it. I'd also like to say in 2021, I have a, in 2021, I have a book coming out on the history of professional sports in Atlanta. More details soon. You can find that at Clayton Truder, C-L-A-Y-T-O-N-T-R-U-T-O-R on Twitter. That's my handle. Thanks for the plug opportunity. Yeah, of course. So uh, be glad to have you guys here. Uh, for those uh, not familiar with the show, uh, it's pretty simple. Uh, there's going to be three rounds. The first two rounds are going to be four categories each. Uh, the two contestants are going to take turns picking categories where they're going to then ask them three questions from that category. Every time they get a question right, they get a point. Every time they get one wrong, uh, there's no penalty, but the other guy can then jump in and uh, steal that point if he knows the answer. And then the third round will be a final category uh, or it will be a single category in the third round. And uh, most points at the end wins. It's pretty simple. So uh, we'll go ahead and jump into it. Philip, as I mentioned, has been randomly selected as player one. So, Philip, you have the first choice of our first round categories, which are she's here to win, friend, click, click, saddle up, see you on the moon then. And once again, as always, we will always never not be using this tournament as an opportunity to push our weird random 10 year old indie pop uh, choices on the world. So, uh, Philip, uh, choice to you uh, where you want to start. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's go with See You on the Moon, then. See You on the Moon, then. This is both simultaneously probably the most convoluted category we have this year, which also makes it my favorite. So I'm curious to see how you do. See You on the Moon, then. We're going to give you an astronaut from Apollo 11 and, and then ask you a question about a sports figure who shares either their first or last name. So we're going to go right. <laughs> looks like this. God. Buzz Aldrin shares a name with this former Marquette and Virginia Tech men's basketball coach who took over at Texas A&M in 2019. Uh, Buzz Williams. Buzz Williams is correct. Philip on the board, the first question here. It sounds more convoluted as a category than I think it actually plays, but <laughs> either way, here's your second clue. Michael Collins shares a name with this diminutive Kansas guard who was a consensus first team All American in the 2009 10 season. I can't think of Kansas players from that far back. Um, hmm. We'll just go with Michael Williams. Is that a thing? Michael Williams is not the correct answer. Clayton, do you, uh, do you have a guess here? I'll go with another common last name. I'll go with Michael Jones. Michael Jones is also incorrect. We were actually looking for the Collins. It was Sharon Collins was the answer. Sharon okay. Collins was the first team All-American. Ah, player. the last name. Got it. Okay. All right. Final clue in the category. Neil Armstrong shares a name with the all-time leading passer in Nebraska school history, this 21st century quarterback. Oh, man. Um... Oh, this is embarrassing. Uh, I'm going to get it wrong, so I'll just say something, I guess. Uh, Neil Brown. Neil Brown. Head coach at West Virginia, yes. Correct. <laughs> uh, uh, Clayton, do you have an answer here? Um, I think it's Armstrong's the last name. I'm just trying to envision what his first name was. Um, is it James Armstrong? James Armstrong is incorrect. It was Tommy Armstrong Jr. was the quarterback for Nebraska. So, all right, a bit of a tough category. Fill up with a one nothing lead. Clayton, you've got control of the board. Your remaining options are she's here to win friend, click, click, and saddle up. Where do you want to go? 
I'm a bit intrigued by Saddle Up, but I hope it's not about collegiate rodeo clowns. I'm going to go with it, though. Saddle Up. Saddle Up is about cowboys, actually, but to make it a little harder on Philip, no Oklahoma State cowboys in this category. Just, come on, come on. If you want to make it that easy on you. All right, here's question number one. The highest elevation of any FBS football stadium belongs to War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, where the cowboys of this Mountain West school compete. Wyoming. Wyoming is correct. Clayton on the board, and it's one-to-one. Second clue in Saddle Up. The mascot for the University of California, Santa Barbara, is this, a type of South American cowboy. A gaucho. Gaucho is correct. One of my favorite uh, sports memories was being a kid and being at a, uh, it was UC Irvine versus UC Santa Barbara in the uh, Big West tournament, and the UC Irvine student section started chanting, what's a gaucho at uh, UC Santa Barbara, and that has <laughs> tickled me ever since. Gaucho is also the name of my third favorite Steely Dan album. Oh, there you go. All right, final clue in Saddle Up. Longtime Dallas Cowboy Tony Romo played his college ball at this Ohio Valley Conference school. Eastern Illinois. Eastern Illinois is correct. Clayton knows his Cowboys and sweeps the category, takes a three to one lead. Philip, uh, it's to you between uh, she's here to win friend and click click. Mm. Well, I enjoy women's sports. I can't do a lot of trivia on it. So I'm going to go with click click and hope that it's not about women's sports like I think the other one is. All right. Uh, first question, shocked readers click clicked by the millions over to this now defunct website in January of 2013 when they broke the story that Manti Teo's tragically deceased girlfriend had never existed. Oh, over to, it's, um, what was his site um, before, um, oh crap, what was it called? ESPN bot screwed it up. Um, crap. Uh, it's not the ringer, but it's the precursor to the ringer. So we'll just say ringer because I can't remember what it is. The ringer is not correct. Clayton, do you have the answer? Deadspin. Deadspin is correct. Oh. It was, I think you were looking for Grantland, but it was actually. Yeah, I was. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, uh, Phil, back to you for a second. That was a bit here. trashy of a story for Grantland. Grantland <laughs> seemed a bit more erudite than fake girlfriend stories. You'd think, you'd think anyone that would have uh, found that one would have uh, been happy to report it because I was True. Uh, quite the scoop either way. Clicks matter, man. Clicks matter. Uh, we'll just we'll stick with click, click. All right. Well, click, apparently, click. Grantland wasn't focused enough on that. But <laughs> yeah, Grantland clearly wasn't doing something right. All right. Second clue for Philip for click, click. The NCAA didn't like fans click clicking over to Donald De La Hay's YouTube channel, and when he refused to demonetize it in 2017, he lost his NCAA eligibility and his scholarship as a kicker for this school. Um. Was it USF? USF is incorrect, Clayton. I have no recollection of the story whatsoever. It's the kind of story I would typically find really interesting, but um, I'm going to say Colorado State. Colorado State is wrong. Philip was really close. It was you so yeah. close. I'm sorry, Damn it. Florida. I, was the wrong I knew it was one of them. I was like, it was a group of five, Florida school. It's one or the other. Well, yeah. USF is basically in Central Florida, too. So <laughs> yeah. It should almost count. Yeah. <laughs> Final clue in the category, click, click for Philip. When this football coach's tenure at Texas A&M came to an end in 2007, a contributing factor was him soliciting boosters to click, click over to a secret newsletter for $1,200 a year. In 2007, that would be, um, good Lord, I am way off tonight. Um, damn it. No, I can't even think of a Texas A&M head coach's name. This is amazing. Um, oh, crap. Mm. I literally can't name a Texas A&M coach just to be within the right school. Um, well, in roughly 2020, it will be Johnny Manziel. So. Sorry, uh, Dennis Francione? Dennis Francione is correct, fellow. Well, Thank you. Nice. So you're not only a Texas A&M coach, but the correct one for the answer here, so well done. All right, Clayton's got a 4-2 lead, and you are in control of the final category, which is she's here to win friend, which, as you may have guessed, is about uh, prolific women's hoopsters. So here's your okay. first clue. In 2007, while still a sophomore, she scored her 1,000th point as a Tennessee volunteer, making her the fastest player in program history to hit that plateau. Candace Parker. Candace Parker is correct. All right, second clue, and she's here to win friend. From 1982 to 86, while younger brother Reggie was across town at UCLA, this future head coach, GM, TV analyst, and sideline reporter was lighting up scoreboards and winning natties at USC. Cheryl Miller. 
Cheryl Miller is correct. And uh, final clue in the category. Before Elena Deladano was a two-time WNBA MVP, she was scoring points by the truckload for this Colonial Athletic Association school. CAA. Um, Virginia Commonwealth? Virginia Commonwealth is incorrect. Philip, do you want to guess here? Is it I think, uh, Monmouth? Monmouth is incorrect. She was a fighting blue hen of Delaware, uh, University of Delaware. Oh, that's right. All right. So our score is 6-2 to two Clayton as uh, we head into the second round. Still a ways to go. And uh, I'm going to hand the round two over to my co-host, Sam, here. All right. Same format, guys. Four categories, three questions per. And we have your choices of football rivalries, non-Division one sports. Whose arena is it anyway? Our only Heisman Trophy winner. These are your four categories. So, Clayton, you are player two. You get first choice here. May I have our only Heisman Trophy winner, please? I'm going to guess you to the uh, Oklahoma State one out of this as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. Very simple. I'm going to name, name you the school. You name the Heisman Trophy winner. Our first one here, Boston College. You realize that's where I went to graduate school. I don't know if we've ever talked about this. We did not realize that or we would not have put this question in the game. Uh, Doug Flutie. Doug oh, I see. So you won't give me ones, but uh. <laughs> <laughs> if you have a secret yeah. grad school you went to, it might be in here. We don't know. So we only went with the undergrad. They're going to have a category called Famous Slavens coming up. <laughs> He's like, none? <laughs> All right. Oh, Philip. I mean, obviously, there's one. Well, that's, that's Oregon. Uh, Marcus Mariota. Marcus Mariota is correct. And finally, TCU. Uh, TCU is. Um, TCU is is that Sammy Baugh? It is not Sammy Baugh. Philip? Hmm. I think it was a running back for like, I don't remember his name for the life of me. Hmm. I'll just say Daryl Walker, even though I'm wrong. Davey O'Brien, going back. Oh, that's ways. right. Oh, same, he got his same, own trophy same era. Even. Yep. Yeah. Same era, same ball. Would have loved to give that as a hint, but uh, hard, harder question there at the end. So, <laughs> Philip, you got a choice from our remaining categories football rivalries, non Division one sports, and whose arena is it anyway? Hmm. Let's go with. I feel like you're going to make me name trophies, which is going to be tough, but I'll go with football rivalries. All right, football rivalries. These two neighboring Southern schools play each other annually in a game that's still at least unofficially known as the world's largest outdoor cocktail party. Uh, Ole Miss and Mississippi State? That is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Clayton? Georgia and Florida. Georgia and Florida is correct. The oldest rivalry among Western colleges is simply called the big game, and has featured these two teams since 1892. Western colleges. Um, Army, Navy? This is not uh, Army, Navy. Philip? Okay. I mean, excuse me, Clayton? Cal Stanford. Cal Stanford is correct. It, known officially as the Cat Grizz game, and unofficially as Brawl of the Wild. It's a rivalry game that features the two FCS institutions of this state. Oh, let's go with Montana. Montana is correct. Good poll. <laughs> okay. Just needed the questions to be a little harder. He knows his FCS football better than his FCS football, clearly. <laughs> All right. Clayton, we still have non-division one sports, and whose arena is it anyway? Uh, I'll go with whose arena is it anyway. Please. All right. This mid-Atlantic school, which calls John Paul Jones Arena home, has made six straight NCAA tournaments with a unique brand of stifling defense. 
Is that Virginia? Virginia is correct. The Breslin Student Event Center is home to this school's basketball program, perhaps best known for winning the 2000 NCAA tournament. Michigan State. Michigan State is correct. Despite playing in modest 3,500-seat McKeon Pavilion, this mid-major has managed to make itself a regular in the top 25 and the NCAA tournament. Is that Gonzaga? This is not Gonzaga. Philip? Mm, I mean, so regular in the top 25 in the NCAA tournament, 35. Um, is that Wichita State? Not, bad, not a bad guess, given, given how little clues there are there, but no, it was uh, St. Mary's. Mm. So I think we've gone back-to-back -back games with the St. Mary's question since we had the Marshall yeah, Ali. Marshall Ali I don't know. Was, it was, yeah, I can't remember if that was the last game we did yesterday, but we certainly had one. So, all right, Philip, you have non-Division one sports here. Okay. This Division three football mega program produced two receivers who were drafted and played multiple NFL seasons, Pierre Garçon, and Cecil Shorts the third. Um, and three. Let's go with uh, was it Texas A&M Commerce? Texas A&M Commerce is incorrect. Clayton. Yeah. Mount Union. Mount Union is correct. One uh, Commerce is one division. That's right, man. I guess stuff gets so complicated between SES D two D. Okay. This one-time New England Patriots Super Bowl hero and 2015 Pro Bowler played his college ball at Division II West Alabama. Uh, um, that's not who I think it is, is it? Um, one time. I do not know, so let's just say Julian Edelman. Julian Edelman is incorrect. Clayton? It's the little scat back guy, and his name is escaping me right now. I'm trying to um, – what was his name? He was in the league for a minute there. Um, I think he went to the Chargers for a little bit. Um, what was his name? Uh, how quickly we forget. Um What's his name? Uh, he had he had very nice hair. He had nice wavy dark hair. <laughs> pretty pretty dreamy guy, as I recall. Uh, I can't think of his name. Uh, you are thinking of uh, not the correct answer. I believe you're thinking of Danny Woodhead. The correct answer was uh, Malcolm Butler. Although Danny Woodhead, I do believe, rushed for a gazillion yards at a smaller college. Didn't so. he go to some like one room school or something as well? Shad Shadron State. I don't know where that came in my brain, but I'm pretty <laughs> oh, sure. Nice. That's where he did. But um, yeah, Malcolm Butler. Malcolm right. Butler. Okay. Malcolm Butler. Before winning four four World Series as a member of the New York Yankees. He was the first ever non-Division I finalist for the Golden Spikes Award in 1988 while playing for Division II University of Tampa. Ah, throwing baseball questions at me. Not that I get the full ones. Um, oh. Mm. Good grief, I have no idea. 1988. Um. I mean, I can't give you I, – I, I hate not giving an answer, but I, honestly, I, I do not know. Clayton? I think it's Bernie Williams, but I'm not sure. What's your guess? Bernie Williams. Uh, close. Tino Martinez. Tino. You know that the University of Tampa football stadium is the stadium that became the first Buccaneer stadium, the big sombrero. It was a college stadium. They just did an erector set thing with on it and threw, like, four extra, um, you know, uh, levels onto it. Nice. All right, so big lead for Clayton as we head to the third round. Still uh, enough time that something crazy could happen. Um, but uh, you're going to need a little geography for our third round category today, which is the 14 United States states with two or fewer Division I basketball programs. So we're gonna be looking for the state. Uh, as always, the third round, you guys are going to alternate. Uh, Philip will give an answer, then Clayton, and back and forth until uh, each of you gives an incorrect answer. As long as you keep giving correct answers, you can keep going, keep racking up points. So it is still within, uh, within reach for Philip if Clayton uh, goes out early here, but it's going to take a little bit of doing. But Philip, uh, you are first since you are trailing. So whenever you're ready, give us a U.S. state that you think has two or fewer Division I basketball programs. Uh, we'll start with Idaho. 
Uh, Idaho is actually incorrect. It has Idaho, Idaho State, and Boise State. Uh, so unfortunately, that is an incorrect answer. Uh, so that's Clayton, I guess uh, that's, that's the game. So if you want to uh, name some, we can see how many you can get here. Okay, Vermont. Uh, Vermont is going to be correct. They have uh, just the two. Just the Catamounts. Or just the Catamounts, yeah. Just the one, excuse me. All right, who else you got? Alaska. Alaska, is, that's, that's the one that's got zero. So that is the, uh, that is the easiest one. Here we go. Hawaii. Hawaii's just got the one. Maine. Maine is also correct. Just the University of Maine, the Black Bears of Maine. Um, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Delaware. Delaware is correct. Delaware it's and Delaware like a squircal kind of by myself. <laughs> um, um, does New Ham I think New Hampshire only has two. New Hampshire does only have two. That is correct. Dartmouth and UNH. Yep. Um, let's see. Uh, Montana. Montana. Yeah, we got two. Mon Montana comes up twice today. As <laughs> we, we actually mentioned them. The the two schools, Montana, Montana State. Oh, I'll remember to hit the right button. There we go. Um, is this Gauche doing this? I hadn't. No, do it. I want to see if you can get them all. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, okay. Who else? Uh, um, okay. I already, I already pulled out Delaware. Um, let's see. Quebec is not a state. Um, <laughs> let's see. Um, Nebraska. Nebraska is incorrect. We've got, although I'm not sure, uh, Nebraska, yeah. Creighton, Creighton, and oh, Omaha. Uh, and Omaha, Omaha just Omaha. transitioned up. That's right. University of Nebraska, Omaha, recent, recent mm -hmm. D1 uh, uh, transfer up. So the remaining uh, states were Wyoming, has just got just the Cowboys, uh, Nevada, just wow. uh, UNR and uh, UNLV, uh, West Virginia, West Virginia and Marshall, obviously. Uh, New Mexico, just New Mexico, New Mexico State. Does New Mexico State really count? <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing my New Mexico State shirt while recording the other day. I wish I still had it on. I was going to uh, rub that in your face. But South Dakota, <laughs> uh, North Dakota, and finally Minnesota, one of the ones that surprises people. Wow. Obviously, but the University They've of got like 12 Division One hockey teams. Yeah, we actually had a question about that in uh, last year's trivia, whereas this, this state only has one basketball team that's D1, but like eight hockey teams or something. That blows my mind. Yeah. Crazy stuff. So, uh, Philip, tough things didn't go that go your way today, but uh, hope you had fun anyway. And uh, we are raising some money for some good causes. So I know you picked uh, the Arkansas Food Bank. So we are going to send some money their way. So thank you for uh, coming on. Hopefully, you had a good time, even though uh, things didn't quite go your way today. Hey, man. I mean, I enjoyed myself. I'm not going to share this because I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> but uh, I enjoyed it as always. Uh, you guys are a ton of fun. And uh, I mean, hey, I learned some things today. So uh, apparently, Idaho has Idaho State, and I. <laughs> Thought I knew college basketball well enough to know that, and apparently I don't. All right, and then Clayton. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Clayton, you'll be yeah. advancing to uh, the semifinals, and I know you're raising money for uh, the Street Dog Foundation. So, as we mentioned, every don every uh, contestant getting a donation to their charity, and then the winner is going to get a two hundred dollar bonus. So, Clayton, uh, even more besides bragging rights, has some reasons to keep going. But uh, Clayton, thank you. I genuinely appreciate the donation. All right, guys. Well, enjoyed having you, and uh, Clayton, we'll see you in the next round. All right, thank you. You guys have a nice evening.